Hello there and welcome to Classic Golf Club. Lowest price golf clubs available. This being the Classic Golf Clubs YouTube channel, I'm of course talking about the lowest price golf clubs from the Classic Club era. Taking as my guide the equipment listing pages from Golf World Magazine's April 1977 edition, which lists the McGee Tiger T at £4.75 per iron. The next cheapest option is the Wilson Blue Ridge at £7 per iron, so the Tiger T is a whopping 32% cheaper than the next cheapest. Looking further up the page, graphite shafted irons are being offered by Swilkin at a scary price of £43.50 per iron. On this page we have pink Carston irons on sale for £28 an iron and a little further down Lynx titanium irons for £65 a club. A little further down the page we come to McGregor whose top of the range Jack Nicholas VIP irons sell for £26 per club. Coming back to the McGee Tiger T, what could you have bought with that £4.75 per iron in 1977? The gallon of petrol was 78p, so 6 gallons or 27.3 litres. A bottle of whisky was slightly less at £4.19. A pint of beer was 38p, so you could have got 12.5 pints. A Ford Cortina was £2,523 or 59 sets of Tiger T irons. And a 22 inch Pi Colour TV was £259 or 6 sets of Tiger T irons. To put that into context, here are the typical earnings of a full-time male manual worker and how much of those earnings he'd have to spend to get, acquire a set of irons. I seem to have been diverted a little there. Let's come back to McGee. Who were they? All I've been able to find out is from period adverts in golf magazines. This is the earliest from April 1973 and from it we can see that the irons were even cheaper then at just £3.20 for the cheapest 325 shafted option. Further down the page a company name is given of Vauxhall Stores Limited, who I can only assume had the McGee range made. Their address is given as London SW1, although the clubs are made in Scotland. This next advert from June 1973 has pictures of the two iron models available, one being a slightly different design Tiger T but still at those bargain prices. Moving forward to this advert from June 1975 and we see what must be their flagship deluxe model made using the lost wax casting process. These are priced at £6.95 per iron plus postage. Finally this advert from May 1976 shows the Tiger T model reviewed in this video with a full set comprising four woods and nine irons being offered for just £64. Also shown is the new MG heel and toe model and of interest in the small print are putters at £2.50 each and pencil bags for £2.95. In spite of these comparatively low prices I've come across very few McGee clubs apart from the featured Tiger T just two other models. This earlier Tiger T model and this poor picture of one of the deluxe lost wax irons. Well, I think that's as much as I can say on the uh, background of McGee and who they were. So let's move on to the review of the clubs. Right, woods first in the usual fashion. Um, <clears throat> we'll start with the, let's get this one over, the four wood. Um, you can see the, the name there stamped on the bottom. McGee, brass sole plate, number four. And we can see that this is already starting to deteriorate even though it's not been played a huge amount we've got a crack appearing there and the varnish uh, doesn't look to be of the best quality uh, the whipping's a little bit unusual it, it doesn't taper in the sort of tidy way that they normally do it looks as though the wood rather than being profiled nicely down for a smooth finish has just got a bit of a big step in it uh, interesting looking um, insert with a, a firing pin type finish. I doubt whether that goes any further than the insert. Uh, the true firing pin ones used to go a little bit further into the head than the rest of the insert. Uh, so that's uh, the forward. We'll have a quick look at the other club which isn't a driver. It's a, a two wood um, aluminium sole plate. Um, same design otherwise. Laminated head. 
again we can see the varnish uh, not the greatest quality and again we've got that sudden um, step down uh, on the uh, the taper there the grips on uh, this whole set are pretty uh, poor to be honest I had intended to replace these but uh, I've never really gotten around to it they're an Avon grip you really can see that there or not there we go then that's the woods that I'll be playing today I won't be hitting the forward though because that's in pretty poor shape I've measured that at 20 degrees which is quite a high loft for a forward so um, in its place I'm going to put in the bag uh, this similar sort of uh, vintage and also a, a budget end club uh, a Harold Bird and Son pin seeker and this one is a five iron sorry five wood which I've measured at 21 degrees so very much the same sort of club and here are the irons um, McGee again Tiger T uh, stainless steel heads made in Scotland so let's have a quick look at these let's knock them about a bit there we can see the name McGee club number on the bottom and it's a reverse muscle back profile so along the lines of the old DW brand that I love to talk about um, Hosel has got no um, markings on it, no bands or anything. It's a short ferrule, a single red band on that. As with the woods, we've got no shaft band at all. So I'm guessing that this is the cheapest uh, shaft available, which was the 325, I think. Uh, the grip itself, again, very tired, uh, ought to be replaced. I had meant to replace them before I played them, but uh, I never got around to it. And this one is called... Uh, an Avon Merlin grip there we are Avon Merlin so that's the three iron also here we've got the five the seven the pitching wedge and the sand wedge and the lofts on these are quite uh, all over the place um, the three iron starts at a nice 24 degrees but the four iron which isn't shown here is 25 degrees so we've just got a one degree gap difference in those they then continue fairly strong through the set until we get down to the back of the 9 iron, which I think is the 48 degrees that I would like to see. But then the, uh, the wedge, I think, is 54 degrees, so that's quite a bit weaker. And the sand iron is 58 degrees, where you can see that that's a weak loft or not. A bit of mud on there. God, who's not cleaned these up? Yeah, but nice, nice uh, club, the sand iron, I think, um, how it will play, we'll see in a bit. Um, so that's the, the clubs. Now these uh, were retailed by Vauxhall Stores uh, of London. Um, who actually made them? I'm not sure. It says made in Scotland, so um, they were obviously made by one of the uh, larger manufacturers. Um, a lot of these small uh, sort of niche brands... Um, I'm guessing they were produced by one manufacturer. The fact that it is um, the reverse muscle back style makes me think of John Letters, who did a lot of what they called their master model range. Here we've got a, a John Letters, uh, Scotland, Gary Player master model. And if I compare it with the five iron, you can see that they are in many ways very similar. The toe on the Tiger T is a lot more rounded, um, but otherwise, they're not too far apart. This one tapers a little bit on its reverse muscle, whereas the, the Gary Play one is uh, more parallel. But this did have a few changes over the years. So it's a contender John Letters made these, but it could be any of the other um, larger Scottish companies, such as George Nicol, um, Ben Sayers, etc. Uh, just a possibility that it, it, it might have been John Letters. So that's the irons covered. Uh, now we'll move on to the putter. And here is the, the putter that I'll be using today. Uh, recent acquisition this one. You can see on the back of the head there it says Bob Harrison and on the sole it says True Line. Exactly who made this I'm not 100% sure whether there was a, a company called True Line um, who made putters I don't know. We've got three sight lines on the top there, which are about in the right place. Uh, nice length of hosel, nice uh, coloured ferrule there, a sort of a, I don't know what you'd call that, mahogany and gold. Uh, the head itself has got a little bit of offset, 
Um, this is what I call a gem style putter. Uh, these were produced by a lot of the uh, Scottish companies with the name gem on the back. I'll bring up a few pictures of examples. Starting with a George Nicol and a Tom Morris, a Stan Thompson, an unknown brass headed gem, and finally a good old Bronte. Uh, so that's that's as much as I've got to say about the putter really. Uh, a gem style blade putter. Time to put the clubs to the test then. As usual, here are the lofts for anybody interested. And here we are on the first hole. I'm using the two wood. A little bit of aircraft noise in the background, but I hit that one pretty well. 209 yards, pretty much down the middle. Which left me with a six iron. And again, I hit that reasonably well and just came up just short of the green on the fringe. Which left me uh, quite away from the flag which was at the back of the green. It'll be no surprise to anybody that's watched these before that I putted rather than chipped and it went just a little bit long. Left me uh, about a 12 footer for my par. Which slipped by on the right. And that was a, a straightforward tap in for a bogey start. Well here we are again. Uh, Today's supposed to be sunny according to the weather forecast, but as you can see, it's a, a very grey day. Uh, first hole's out of the way, um, so let's have a very quick look at the clubs in the bag. Here they are then. McGee Tiger T, McGee 2 wood, Harold Burdenson 5 wood, the McGee 4 wood is under there, and we've also got the Bob Harrison True Line Putter. Onto the short par 3 second hole where I did that bit of a shank to get things uh, really into stride. I'll be interested to see what that looks like on the video. And, um, just got past the bushes but not the best uh, lie. And I caught it a bit thin but it ran to the right fringe where I had this little chip with an eight iron. Okay for length, but I missed the put for a bogey, so that was a double bogey. Next hole, par five, two wood again. Not a bad strike, just pushed it right into one of the right hand bunkers, which unfortunately was uh, a bit full of water, so I had to take a, a drop. Splat. But I got a reasonable strike on that one and it got me down into range and I had a 5 iron 168 to the flag bit of a thin one though and it ran up just short in the right hand rough where I had this little chip. Nice smooth practice swings. Move on please, nothing to see here. And after that um, diabolical display of chipping, I had this one for a seven, I think it was, which missed. So short one for a triple bogey eight. On to the next hole, two wood again. Reasonable strike, just drew over to the uh, left hand side. Went 203 yards, and I had just over 200, but I hit the three iron 
trying to hit a decent uh, contact with the Tiger Tees, but again, it was a big slice. And that slice three iron went 141 yards. I've got 75 left, so I'm going to try a three quarter pitching wedge. I think I could have done with a full pitching wedge, but I forgot just how lofted that um, pitching wedge was. And I only just got onto the front of the green, and it's a back flag. I gave it a wrap, but I didn't really uh, take the slope into account, as you can see there, as it runs out of picture. It left me this one, which was close, but not close enough. So that was a three put double bogey. Last hole of the five, two wood again, bit of a low one, and it uh, just faded out to the right hand rough. But again, a reasonable strike. That one went 191 yards. It left me an awkward stance, as you can see here. But I made a good connection. Pleased with that from the lie I had. Uh, 10 yards short, I'm going to try a chip with a 7 iron. I seem to put so much pressure when I'm chipping on the video. It's worse than when I'm in a competition, but wish me luck. Can I get this one on the green first go? A little bit thin, but objective achieved. A bit bladed, but it got on the green. Which left me a long one for par. Not to be. So that's five pretty badly played holes. In summary then, I had one triple bogey, two doubles and two singles for a nine over par total. I hit two fairways and no greens in regulation, which was a bit disappointing. Um, the two wood was behaving very well. I was averaging just over 200 yards with that, which considering the temperature, 7 degrees, uh, 45 degrees Fahrenheit, I thought was pretty good. The irons, I just didn't have a good day striking with the irons, so I can't really... Um, blame the bad score on the cheap uh, branded irons uh, in fact I played a couple of days later uh, full 18 and I scored 35 points Stableford with the same clubs so that was just uh, one over my handicap so on the whole I think you can safely say that the clubs perform pretty well considering their very low price well that's uh, about it for this one I think thanks for watching and as usual, I hope to see you next time.